Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to my presentation. So the topic for the presentation is challenges in supporting virtual CPU hot plug in SOC based systems like ARM64. Well, uh, I am system software architect working at Huawei Technologies, Cambridge, UK, uh, UK. Uh, and um, uh, primarily in my past, uh, I've done a lot of networking stuff, uh, dealt with uh, system aspects of it. Um, here uh, in Huawei, I'm also official maintainer of their networking driver, HNS, across different SOCs. And uh, uh, in my recent attempt beside this virtual CPU hot plug, I've been also involved in um, enabling XDP on HNS driver. Agenda for today's presentation is um, uh, in the recent past, there have been attempts made to add the support of the virtual CPU hot plug for ARM64 based systems in Kimo and Linux guest kernel. Uh, we have received uh, some sort of a mixed reviews from the community and uh, though some vendors have practical reasons to have such a support added uh, but a uh, few of the community members have an apprehension as well to uh, support it so this presentation is an attempt to highlight the key issues in supporting the virtual cpu hot plug feature for arm64 based socks outline uh, so um, the entire presentation has been divided into some sort of a very quick overview uh, and then we'll go through the known challenges across the system architecture kvm host kimo virtualizer guest kernel and we'll discuss the workarounds uh, some implementation have Im attempts have been made in the past and the recent times as well We'll see the problem being faced in them and then summary we'll discuss about the future work and then we'll open the session for the q and uh, so why do we need a cpu hot plug in general what we know is um, it can be used for provisioning uh, while provisioning rather uh, so uh, for example in case of pre-provisioned uh, resources but which are auto scaled uh, so orchestration frameworks like kh uh, can use a feature called as vertical pod or a scaling in which they can add up a certain CPU resources and remove them dynamically depending upon their occupancy. For example, during the night server systems are less occupant, so they might like to remove certain CPUs. Uh, uh, and it can also be done for the load balancing. Another thing is the on-demand provisioning. So a very good example is a capacity upgrade on-demand in which certain kind of customers would like to add uh, uh, or increase the capacity later on once their business have grown in. So now they have kind of, uh, uh, they can afford that kind of uh, resources. So uh, it is used for that purposes as well. So you need a, C a basic CPU hot plug feature to be able to support this particular demand. And then um, it can be used to isolate the error causing CPUs, uh, the offending CPUs within the system due to the RAS, identified due to the RAS. And uh, uh, this, can, this might be required just because uh, to stop the propagation of the errors within the system. But I'm not very sure this is uh, something which makes sense in the virtual world. But anyways, um, uh, another uh, reason could be for onlining and offlining the CPUs for the suspend resume. This kind of support has been there for the ARM64 based systems for quite long. And this is based upon PSCI calls, uh, CPU of base hot plug. Uh, and you could see this uh, support is already there as part of their uh, kernel uh, changes uh, for quite long and has been there. There's a bit of a detail which I've mentioned as part of the links you can see below and you would like to read them. Uh, I'll just uh, skip for now. Uh, well, uh, there's certain uh, events uh, sequences which happens while you plug in the CPU and while you unplug the CPU. So this is for the virtual CPU hot plug. So um, I've just added these diagrams 
as uh, completeness. These are very well understood uh, framework and has already been part of the kernel for quite long. Uh, I'll just kind of scratch through it uh, to get uh, things started. So we can see different layers like uh, uh, hardware, uh, host, KVM, Kimu, then ACP interface and the guest kernel. Whenever the CPU is uh, plugged or unplugged, the events gets exchanged from the Kimu through the ACP interface to the guest kernel. So uh, certain kind of uh, events get uh, sent by the guest OS to the Kimu as well through the ACP uh, CPU control device. And for the events uh, from the Kimu to the guest OS GED device is used uh, to intimate the kind of event which is uh, which has happened. So uh, eventual result of these event is to kind of uh, uh, know first of all what event has happened and then uh, to associate for example in case of the hot plug uh, the the physical id which in arm term we call it as a mp idr to that of the logical cpu id and uh, of course um, the uh, in case of the reverse that is unplug uh, uh, you uh, you identify the cpu which is being unplugged and then you try to offline that particular cpu and and the eject action take place. So I, would, I won't be going into detail as it, uh, as I said, uh, these are well understood uh, concepts and uh, my idea about the presentation is uh, to assume you know already these things and uh, I'm gonna present further the known challenges. So in the, in the, in the previous past, uh, there have been certain attempts what, uh, 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 what have been kind of, uh, you know, attempts to uh, add up this virtual CPU hot plug support, but there have been uh, some problems what we have faced across uh, different areas. So in case of the ARM64 system architecture, first of all, um, uh, we know that the system architecture as such does not have any concept of physical CPU hot plug. Uh, there's no specification as such from the ARM which defines any standard way to realize a virtual CPU hot plug either because you don't have a physical uh, CPU hot plug specification. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the ARM components like GIC uh, also have not been designed to realize a physical CPU hot plug capability. Uh, as such, GIC requires all the CPUs to be present at initialization. Now, known challenges within the host KVM. Uh, KVM also requires all the vCPUs to be created during the VM inert time. Um, now, this is something uh, which you can say uh, is kind of reflecting what the system architecture requires in, but uh, because uh, uh, it, it should have all the vCPUs created and it has some sort of a, uh, uh, you know, effects on other components uh, which are part of the KVM. For example, uh, the vCPU, uh, uh, each vCPU will have VGIC related resources initialized and fixed during the creation. Uh, and um, various uh, VGIC per CPU static data structures, for example, they need to be initialized early. Uh, some config uh, of the related uh, private interrupts, for example, SGIs and PPIs, they also need to be present at the time when the CPUs are created. So they get initialized at that time, right? And also uh, any resources like memory regions related to re distributors, they also need to be uh, done uh, at the VM inner time, right? So for example, whenever the, the vCPUs are getting created at that time, basically all these resources, memory regions, data structures get initialized and uh, you cannot change them later on. So uh, uh, it's all related to uh, the vCPUs which should be create, which should be present uh, and get, should get created all during the VM in a time. Uh, 
once the vcps have been created in the host kvm their destruction is also not reported yet this is not something which is arm 64 specific but intel uh, architecture also has got a same limitation in the kvm but there are work arounds around this so this is not a big challenge but uh, people have already solved this particular part uh also we know that um generally the uh, the mpidr is something which uniquely identifies the vcpu in the system and uh, uh, for the virtual world as of now this particular value of the register is getting derived and set by the kvm uh ideally it should be a responsibility of the user space instead of the kvm and um, uh, right now it is being derived using the vcpu id uh, which is sent by the kemo to the kvm and it does some sort of a mapping as you can see uh, in the diagram and derives the uh, the mpidr value which gets programmed into vmpidr register uh, for that particular uh, cpu so at the kimu level um, because there is a limitation imposed by the vgc at the host kvm level kimu must create and initialize all the vcpus at the word mac in a time now uh, this has got uh, a ripple effect kind of thing because you need to do this thing kimu must then ensure all uh, uh, the complete initialization of the gig as well uh, this includes initialization of all the redistributors ITS related to all possible vcpus um, realization of vcpus and its threads in kimu might not be desirable for possible vcpus which are in disabled state also the unwiring of the interrupt setups between the vcpus and the gig requires further consideration in qm and uh, uh, this is something which is not present by default uh, in the kimu so as part of the changes of the vc virtual cpu hot plug this has this support has been added um, for arm 64 kimu lacks support to correctly specify the vcpu topology that is uh, on the basis of soc cluster core threads uh this is required to uniquely identify a vcpu being plugged or unplugged and uh, uh ideally this should be mapped to something uh like mpidr mpidr is unique uh, remember and uh, uh it's kind of uh, broken for a physical system it does have the affinity but that affinity is something which we cannot use as suggested by arm people to uh, get the cpu topology information so it it has got no relation as such uh, we can uh, say it but uh, at the virtual world within the kimu we do require some sort of association between what we are trying to plug in and where we are trying to plug in and correlated with the mp dir using some sort of a mapping so perhaps this needs to be done and discussed also kimu lacks the support of ppt table which shall be used to pass on the vcpu topology to the guest kernel now within the guest kernel uh, any arm 64 architecture related changes done inside the kernel for the guests should seamlessly run on the host kernel now this is a big requirement because it has got a lot of implications which means that um, you cannot place any kind of switches within the guest kernel to distinguish whether this is a this is the code running as part of the guest kernel and is related to the uh, the cpu hot plug uh, for uh, for the virtual cpus now um, vcpu as such vcpu hot plug might benefit from some some sort of a standardization in the architecture and firmware acpi level uh, if we can do that and uh, any future specification along physical cpu hot plug must, must not be duly constrained by vcpu hot plug interface defined now uh, so 
whatever we do as part of the standardization, uh, because currently physical CPU hot plug doesn't exist, suppose in future it comes and it shouldn't contradict uh, to what we have done and should pay attention to that. So that is just a kind of a consideration we need to pay in. That's a kind of a challenge as well. So uh, there have been certain uh, workaround which has been discussed for the for the challenges what we just discussed. So various workarounds um, which have been discussed within the community across the years um, are something like uh, uh, all possible VCPUs cre uh, are, cre are created within the KVM and Kimo at the VM initialization. Uh, so it's kind of pre-creation of all of the VCPUs. Uh, but the Kimu only realizes possible vCPUs that are not disabled. Uh, now remember the realization of vCPU means that the threads also get spawned, right? But uh, as per the new changes, the threads are not spawned uh, for the disabled vCPUs. So we save a bit in that as well. And that just kind of helps in, in just fitting the changes as part of neatly within the QM and the way the QM works as of now for the normal case as well, without CPU hot plug case as well. Now, Kimu pre initializes VGIC distributors for all the possible vCPUs in the VGIC. Now, I remember because the VGIC uh, has got this requirement that this needs to be done as part of the uh, initializer as part of the VM init uh, process, right? So Kimu does that and uh, all the distributors are created along with the vCPUs uh, at the VM minute time. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, and uh, of course, because the redistributors are, uh, are like, uh, for each of the vCPU, so uh, they're kind of uh, both present together at the VM at time. So there have been certain discussions uh, which uh, are related to these. You can refer to below. I have just provided them the links. Well, um, Kimu and host KVM uh, is enhanced to support user space, should be enhanced to support the user space configuration of the MPIDR value of the vCPU. So right now, as discussed in the previous slides, this is the, being done by the KVM and it uh, derives the value of MPIDR using the vCPU ID. But ideally there should be a, for the virtualized case, there should be a, a user space thing. And KVM shouldn't get involved in the derivation of the MPIDR value except uh, for uh, uh, configuring that value in, within the VMP ID or uh, register, which is a privileged operation. Uh, also on vCPU hot unplug, Kimu parks and powers down the vCPU. So remember uh, that there was a limitation within the KVM that it, you can create the vCPUs, but you cannot destroy them, which is kind of a limitation, which is uh, also present in Intel. So the common framework, which has been added as part of the key move is to park down the vCPUs, which have been unplugged rather than destroying them at the KVM level. So at KVM, they always remain alive. Uh, just that uh, they are brought down to the low power mode. Uh, now, Kimu provides the complete emulatory table, including all possible vCPU interfaces and its redistributors to the guest kernel. This information is used by the guest kernel to uh, basically initialize uh, its data structures for the base addresses uh, uh, and uh, uh, other parameters. Uh, at the boot time, guest kernel uses info from the MADD table to size its various data structures, including initialization of redistributors, as I said, with all possible vCPUs. So redistributors also start to exist within the guest kernel, just that they don't have their vCPU instances for the disabled uh, possible vCPUs, which gets created and reflected while the CPUs unplugged uh, or unplugged. 
Now, uh, these are the recent and the earlier attempts uh, which have been made. Very recent were the ones done in the June by me. Uh, so uh, both the kernel changes, that is the guest changes and the virtual uh, uh, CPU outlook changes for the Kimu uh, uh, were floated. Uh, the, the host kernel didn't require any change and these were found to be working as such uh, without the change, any change within the host, host kernel. Though there's one change like uh, ability to configure the MP IDR from the user space that might require a bit of a change, but as such, these are pretty agnostic of the host. So all the workarounds are uh, take care of the limitations what we just uh, kind of discussed uh, within the within the Kimu as well as the guest kernel. And the changes in the guest kernel are non-destructive, uh, but again, uh, since um, uh, they are kind of uh, done in a way and uh, we don't have a specification, so that can be a concern. We'll see it later. So you might like to go through these references. So what are the problems being faced in upstreaming now? Um, ARM64 system architecture does not support physical CPU hot plug, as we know. Now, due to the absence of the suitable specification, uh, there have been concerns which have been raised to avoid any divergent system architectures uh, being invented by different vendors. So it's not just uh, one vendor who is trying to support this thing. Maybe other people might come with their own ideas and uh, it might happen if, uh, if there's no standardization of this, then the things can get a bit messy. And uh, probably this has left patches standard uh, across multiple attempts. Kimu patches cannot proceed till the time the guest kernel patches are duly considered by the kernel community, which uh, currently we feel that it has not been done. And so I would like to request the community for more reviews and involvement in this. So just to recap the summary and what is the way forwards. Um, ACBI based support of the virtual CPU hot plug feature is a much requested feature for the use cases stated earlier in the slides. And uh, as you can see, we have proposed a practical implementation, but uh, it seemed to be making a little progress in the upstreaming uh, for the reason which again we have discussed. Uh, so, the key thing is how do we overcome the resistance uh, to implementing uh, a virtual only feature while minimizing the possible clashes with the, say for example, any potential future uh, physical equivalent if it ever will come. But we need to take care of it now. And uh, would some sort of a minimal specification to ensure some sort of a consistency of implementation in the virtual case specifically alleviate such concerns? and APS how to do this. Uh, the future work is, uh, which is left is around the live migration support, support of the hot plug with uh, NUMA CPU topology, as mentioned earlier, PPTT support to hand over the right vCPU topology info to the guest, test cases, lots of docs, uh, to explain because there are a lot of workarounds, so perhaps require a proper documentation for this. Well, uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank uh, all the individuals who have worked for this particular uh, topic in the past and have discussed and their ideas. I'm just trying to carry forward the past pattern to me and actual work have been uh, done much earlier the concepts i just tried to implement uh, the ideas which were well discussed and uh, and to demonstrate that it, uh, those were achievable and actually those work so anyone that i've missed into my list uh, uh, please forgive me as i said it's it's a tribute to everyone who was involved uh, in this effort with this, I'd like to open the session for any Q&A. So, uh, and also I would like to thank you for listening patiently to my uh, session. Thank you so much. 
and I'm open for any questions from here. Thank you.